This is the Agorist Next Podcast. I'm Brandon. I've got my great co-host, Dag, with me. How are you doing, Dag? I'm doing spectacular, bro. How you doing? Hey, good, man. Good to have you on. So we've got a great, great episode today. You wouldn't think so because we're talking about voting, but voting is a, it's a very Agorist topic because it's what divided Konkin, the founder of Agorism, with Rothbard. It's what divided them. And, you know, I'd say... You know, agorists just just don't vote, or, or they don't participate in any political political system, or you know, they just don't participate politically in government at all. So, but yeah, well, uh, let's get started with Rothbard and 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 Konkin. Sure. So, so yeah, you know, they were, you know, they were bugged. I mean, I don't really think they ever had anything, you know, really much like we'd call falling out or anything. But they uh they parted ways a little bit when it came to strategy. You know, um, Rothbard, he, I think he was just kind of like a whatever, whatever I can grab onto that'll help get us closer to liberty. You know, I, I think he was he, he was down for. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think he was even promoting like Nixon. Uh, so, you know, that's, you know, um, Congress is like, no, no, no. I'm like, <laughs> that's not quite the way to go. But, you know, I mean, I guess I can definitely say that I. I understand both sides of that and I don't know. I mean, there's part of me that's like, kind of like, yeah, I'm glad that there are people even like big L's, you know, out there who are, you know, pushing a political solution, even if I don't necessarily agree with it, just because like, I mean, you know, attack it from all angles, I guess there, there is of course the whole thing of does that add a legitimacy to the system and stuff like that, which I get, <laughs> well, you know, I get, I think that, I think that just having a libertarian party gets people stuck in stuck in believing in the state. And somebody was like, well, Ron Paul brought a lot of people to the movement. And I'm like, yeah, but he didn't run as a libertarian. He ran, <laughs> he ran as a Republican. So so I don't know, and and the the Libertarian Party it, it's always a mess. No I, kidding. Konkin definitely saw the the contradiction, which was you know how can a party liberty run for authoritarian office, which I wholeheartedly agree with. And um, this is one of the few things that I disagree with with Rothbard on. And I think I think what really during the 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 divide the Konkin Rothbard divide. And if, if you guys want all the details, there's a, a article in on our uh, webpage, Agorist Nexus, about it. it. It's titled like "The Conk and Rothbard Divide" by Wendy McElroy. Really good article. Rothbard was trying. Rothbard was one of the founders of, of the Libertarian Party, and Conkin just just disagreed with them completely about it, and and rightfully so, in my opinion. And and I really think that. Just having a libertarian party gets people stuck in this statist process of, um, well, I still, you know, I still believe in the state, but I'm a libertarian because I think if we didn't have a libertarian party, that people would just be like, well, maybe none of this works. You know, maybe we need a new system, or, or maybe we just need to be our own rulers, which, which. Which would be great, in my opinion. I think everybody should be their own sovereign, whatever you want to call it. You know, your own sovereign nation or entity or right. individual or whatever. Ultimately, you know, voting is a statist act. You know, so that's you know that's really the basis, I think, for why uh, you know Conkin was you know against it. It's a, I mean, it's a statist act. You know, so um, so you know, it's what it is. I. Uh, I don't, I don't disagree with you about what you're saying about the, um, the Libertarian Party. Um, I, but I can't help but feel like it's sort of like a baby step for a lot of people, you know, because they are so caught up in this. Uh, you know, like we were talking about uh, before we started recording, uh, people, it seems like a lot of times people prefer action to inaction, even if that action isn't the right choice, you know, so I, people are so stuck in the, in their status ways and, you know, that voting is a thing and politics and, you know, I guess maybe if there's something there that might sort of get them in that direction, I could see it as being like, you know, a plus, but, but, but I mean, ultimately, I mean, you're right. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. I just, 
I feel like it can be something to sort of help work people. Most people don't become anarchists overnight. You know, some people might, you know, and they're, they're better people than me. You know, it, it definitely took me a few years. Uh, one thing, actually, when you talk about Rothbard or not Rothbard, pardon me, a, uh, Ron Paul, uh, you know, running as a Republican, you know, of course, the argument is, oh, well, that's the only way we can get on debates and blah, blah, blah. But if we look back, we see how they still kept him out of everything. I mean, when he was like second in the polls in the Republican primary, they'd say, OK, so and so is in first, so and so is in third, so and so is in fourth. Like they wouldn't even mention his name, you know, so ultimately the state's against you. Like you're not even when you're running as a Republican, like they're, <laughs> you're not getting in there, you know. Um, but that was the one thing for me, because I consider myself a libertarian and I was like, he's a Republican. I'm not going to vote for him. I just don't buy it. You know, if he actually ran as a libertarian and owned it, I'd vote for him. And that was back when I was still voting for Gary Johnson. So, you know. Don't beat me up too much, guys. <laughs> yeah, but, no, but, but yeah, I, uh, I'm, but now I'm just completely over it. Like I'm not, I'm not even like, I think the last time I actually voted, I went and voted just for medical pot, you know, in, in Florida. And, and that was it, you know, and then what actually ended up happening was we got 58% of the vote for medical pot. And they're like, nope, you needed 60, you know, too bad. We're not going to have it, you know, and it's just like, what the fuck? You know, like, come on, like, you've got the majority. Isn't this how, quote, unquote, democracy is supposed to work? You know, and I was I was just done. I was just done at that point. I was like, I'm never voting again. Nuts to all this, you know. Nuts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just, I think, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, like, I think that, I think that people, I think libertarians probably would have benefited more if they didn't have a party because it would have been like, well, I, I guess that's kind of how you how some people figured out like hey there's this other party over here so I mean I, I guess really really to your point though man it's like it's like in a it, it really does just sort of keep people in that middle ground you know like uh, you know like you were saying it keeps them sort of held into that because it does kind of throw a wrench in our our preaching for lack of a better term you know that we're like oh you know yeah you know government's evil and this and that but yeah let's you know let's go vote for this party because they might make it just a little better, you know, kind of, you know, the whole, the whole, the whole damn system is wrong. <laughs> you know, like we don't want any part of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it's just, it, it's really hard. And, you know, I do see both sides of it, you know, but, but I think, I think now if we just, we had like a dissolution of the libertarian party, it might be better because we've got so many, I mean, even the Republicans and the Democrats, mostly from what I've seen, Republicans, they bash the LP, you, you know, you're never going to win. Um, that's why you only get 3% of the vote. Uh, you guys are clowns. So yet we're siphoning votes from them somehow. <laughs> yeah. And we're, yeah. You guys are never going to win. You only get this much, but you're taking all of our votes. Like. You know, well, which one is it you know but um yeah yeah and that's what gets me too is like if uh you know people are like you have to vote you have to vote and you're like okay um well i'm gonna vote for you know libertarian and they're like no you know you can't do that or or even if you say you know trump or, or you know biden or whatever is the opposite to them they're like no and it's like well hold on man i thought you just wanted me to vote and it was oh so important they said it best on the uh, episode of south park years ago with a uh, p diddy and the you know um vote or die thing and he's like we've got to get stan to vote because we'll definitely vote for our guy you know and that's totally how that shit works you know and it's like we got to have these get out and vote campaigns like they're only targeting the people that they think are going to vote for the you know for whoever they want to win yeah yeah and everyone's like oh yeah you got to vote because you're probably going to vote for my guy and it's like well <laughs> you know who who knows you know it's it's just such like a like a religion for people, you know, and, and especially, you know, this time of every four years, you know, people just get in such a such a fervor over it, you know. Uh I mean I mean they get downright nasty. I mean they get I mean threatening. Like like nobody even gets that way if you, you know, talk trash about their religion, you know. I mean if they might say, okay, whatever, if you're talking trash about Christianity, and might say whatever, and might have a couple comebacks, but they're not gonna get this vehemently angry and like like vicious like uh just, just like real quick like my, my my wife posted something about like oh hey like i don't vote but if you are gonna vote maybe consider you know jojo and here's a web page you know and, and this and that you know nothing nothing you know combative or anything and, and and this dude i mean this this grown-ass man 
you know, commented back on all caps. And this is somebody we know in real life, you know, um, you shut the hell up. You don't get to vote. You don't get no say, you know, and, and it's just like, dude, like, like, what's your deal? You know, and this is just something else to internet culture too. You know, I mean, I commented back very, you know, politely. I was like, Hey man, you know, you're going to speak to my wife like that, you know? And it's like, like, why, how would you ever think you can say that to somebody? Like if we were like in real life, face to face, like you would expect to get punched in the fucking face for saying it. And this guy's like 60 in a wheelchair. I'm not going to punch him in the face, you know, but, but like, how do you expect to say that to somebody, you know, and not have some sort of like, you know, some sort of repercussions, you know, but people just, like, it's, oh, they just get so emotional about this nonsense. And it's, I mean, it's tough. It's kind of, kind of like, how do you, I mean, how do you fight that? How do you debate with somebody like that? I mean, how do you convince somebody like that? And I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I just wouldn't even bother, you know, but, but, but man, it's, it's, it's tough. It's a tough bridge across. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, why do we even want this? Because every four years, everyone's just all, pissed off and divided and uh in a bad mood and um you know we can't let the other guys win and it's it you know it's just it's just absolute chaos every four years you know there's do you do you million think that spent. was as crazy yeah 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 M- million spent <laughs> waste resources time yeah and that that really gets me about this you know yeah um, wasted opportunities yeah, just... time mm-hmm uh, Mm-hmm. Just, just for this nonsense, you know, just so lobbyists can, can get another uh, foot in the door. Um, do you think that it being this insane, uh, like this this go around especially, do you think that maybe there's a silver lining here? Like, because like, so I watched the debates. Did you watch the debates? Uh, I saw like 10 minutes of the uh, 10 or 15 minutes of the presidential one, but I had to turn it off yeah, because good, they good. were just yeah, you, trying to speak over each other the whole time you wasted less of your time than i did you're a good man um <laughs> but it's just like like you just see it and it's like and everybody on both sides admits how childish and stupid and all this this was and it's like but you're still going to continue to participate so i'm hoping that there's like a silver lining here with with a lot of this that just the crazier it gets the more people are going to realize it's nonsense you know and i'm I'm hoping that it gets people thinking maybe in, and not like in a third party direction, you know? Um, yeah. I'd be thrilled if, you know, 60 million people went out and voted libertarian. I really would be, you know, be like, okay, we're making headway, you know, but like, but that's not ultimately what I want to happen. But like, I, I'm just hoping that, man, we can get a, a few people off of this that just realize how much nonsense it is. And maybe we can get a few more people over to the, uh, over to the side of a uh, Liberty. I mean, do you think there's any, there's any hope for that? Or, 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 you know, are you pleased when you see it being this insane? Yeah, I mean, if nothing else, the entertainment value is something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that a lot of people this, especially this year, um, I do know a couple people who've been like, "Man, I just, I think I'm just tired of this whole process altogether." And I was like, I was like, yeah, you know, trying to basically get my foot in the door, like, um, you know, this whole process is crap, kind of a thing. Like, why do we even need it? And um. So I have seen a couple people just get so, I don't know what the word is, um, disillusioned with with our, our political process. So I, I have seen a silver lining to it. Um, but I, I remember, so it, it was the 2008 election, right? And I think two or three people were like, I've never seen a better list of candidates on each side of this thing, Republicans and Democrats. And back then I was like, I've never seen a, a bigger group of clowns on both sides of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, never, that was Palin. That was the Palin year, right? That was 08? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you had like um, <laughs> McCain, who was like basically just, uh, you know, Bush too, and Obama, who was just Bush. Everybody was Bush too, and and then you have Ron Paul, and I was like, I, I, everyone seems like a clown except for this guy, and uh, I even told people, I'm like, I've never seen a bigger group of clowns in my life. Like this is horrible, but but yeah, I mean, after I realized that that the guy that was supposed to win, Ron Paul, I mean, he's the only guy who you know everyone else is a war hawk back then. He's the only guy saying, you know, you know bombing people for freedom isn't 
making our country better. It's not reducing terrorism. It's actually doing the opposite. And, uh, mm-hmm. and you know, no, nobody would listen. And, and, you know, everyone's like, well, you know, that guy will never win. And, um, and I mean, they, they were right. They were, you know, I, you know, back in 08, I, I wanted, I wanted him to win, but, uh, but the, the whole thing, the whole thing was, was really sad. And after he had, he had lost both of the, the primaries in 08 and 012, I, I just went straight, you know, this is not a system we need. And, and then I actually, 2012 is the, is the year that I found out about agorism, um, which put me on quite a, a crazy path. I, I didn't really, then I, I later on uh, had read New Libertarian Manifesto and it just slowly evolved from there. I think each, each and every year, it's just going to progress and get worse and worse. I mean, who do we have now? We've got a guy that has had <laughs> a similar... thought it was bad last time. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> We've got a guy who's, got, who's had like a silver spoon in his mouth the whole entire time, who's been on like reality television. I think he's declared bankruptcy like three or four times. Um, mm-hmm. He's had like some bailouts with the bank stuff. You know, the, the bankers have bailed him out. So... And and then you've got Joe Biden, who's like, you know, and Harris actually, both of them. Where do we like, start? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Extreme, like anti, you know, pro police, anti black, you know, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> you know, yeah, if you look at the, either of their histories, yeah, they're, they're, they're anti everything the left like thinks they are they think they're voting against it's like you can't and really on either side of this like if you're voting for trump because wherever you know whatever you think he's all this stuff where you're voting for you know um the democrats because they're whatever all this stuff and it's like like they're like they're really not you know they're like oh right now it's important because we've got a racist president in there and it's like um biden's probably done a lot more stuff that's actually affected black people negatively you know or i'm sorry people of color uh negatively you know um than you know than trump ever has you know uh when we talk about like the last election it's like only one of the candidates was a war criminal before the election <laughs> you know now trump is you know but but i mean only uh only hillary was you know before that you know but um but now he definitely is uh and it's and then, of course, when you look at, you know, from the, you know, the Republican side, it's like, well, Trump's really just like a New York liberal. Like, I mean, he pretty much always has been, you know, he's not his views really aren't that far right by any means. But yeah, you know, I guess when you look at the options. Yeah. I mean, you know, he was a Democrat in the 90s. He, he even said he was a Democrat. And, uh, you know, the thing the thing, though, is that if you take Democratic ideas from the 90s, they look Republican now, like 30 years later. And, uh, oh, <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, what, I saw someone post today about, oh, Mike Pence and all the, you know, anti gay stuff. You know, he did this and that and voted against this or that. And it's like, was it maybe even as late as 012, but definitely, you know, eight? Obama was anti gay marriage. You know, I mean, Obama would have been, I mean, they'd be calling him a Nazi if he was running right now on his 08 platform. Yeah. Maybe, probably. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and, um, you know, look at look at Kennedy. Kennedy. Kennedy was a Democrat back then, but he would have been like more Republican than the last twenty years of of Republicans running. So, in terms of like everyone, like, except for maybe like Ron Paul. But yeah, it it's a crazy world we live in, especially when it's like everyone's fighting about you know if we should vote for you know, some guy that used to hang out with Epstein and screwed a porn star and had to pay her like restitution or something. And then you've got some old guy who, who, you know, gropes children and sniffs everyone. And, you know, uh, the meme, the memes have been great though. Thank God for memes. I don't know how I would have survived, <laughs> you know, all the, all this stuff. It's they're, they're just the best. Um, I, uh, <laughs> Oh mercy. Um, so, Okay, so so when it comes to I guess morality of voting, the uh, there, there there's a couple things. There's people say, oh well, you know maybe you know you can vote and change a little bit here or there or what have you. But the big argument from a lot of people who are anti-voting is that voting itself is immoral. It's contributing to the system. So you know 
two sides of that. Um, the one, let's say the, the correct or the, uh, you know, the, the Agora side or the non-voting side is, uh, is basically a couple things. One of the big ones is that, A, like we said, voting is a statist act. If we are not statist, then we shouldn't be doing statist shit. So let's not vote, you know, um, but but another one saying that it's, it's contributing to the system, you know, it's perpetuating it, it's legitimizing it. And there are a couple points on that. Uh, some people would say that because like um, anything from, well, just participating means like you're accepting the outcome, right? If you're playing the game, you're playing by those rules, you're accepting the outcome. And I don't want to accept the outcome. Um, other people might say things like, uh, well, you have blood on your hands, you know, for whatever that person you voted in does, you know. If you're in a lynch mob, who's found guilty? Everybody in the lynch mob or just the person who strung the rope? You know, I think everybody who participated has some sort of guilt in their hands. You know, um, I mean, I, God, I'm going to say a couple things here on this podcast. They're going to horribly embarrass me, guys, but deal with it. Deal with it. Um, one of them is in 08, I voted for Obama. All right. And all the terrible shit he fucking did. You know, I wasn't over there bombing brown kids, you know. But I can't say my hands are clean, you know, along with any of the other things that, that he did that were, were pretty atrocious, you know, and the quote unquote possible good things he did, did does not weigh, you know, outweigh the bad. All right. I get that argument a lot of times, too. Well, yeah, FDR did a lot of really terrible things, but the good thing is he did outweigh it. No, 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 it doesn't work that way. Um, but so but so that's that's another big, you know, argument that you're, you're, you're legitimizing it or, you know, the, the blood is going to be on, on on your on whatever they do. The blood is going to be on your hands. And then. um but, you know, and then the other big one is like, well, the way that you're legitimizing it is, if nothing else, you participating, other people seeing you participate, you know, you are giving that government, you know, legitimacy by ju ju just by doing it, just by dealing with it. When, of course, you know, as Agoras, we just want to opt out, <laughs> you know, avoid them, avoid them as, as best we can. And then, you know, um, one thing that's definitely worth mentioning would be like uh, Walter Block's. Um, idea on that he basically uh are you you're familiar with walter block right brandon yeah yeah okay um yeah i mean he i i love wally i love hearing his opinions on things um really it helps you look at things differently and his books are basically like if you want to be the most unpopular person at a party like bring his ideas to a party because like uh <laughs> you know they, they will make you a lot of a uh, you'll lose a lot of friends but um but at any rate well you know what he says and this is a very specific example but it does paint the picture that voting itself may not be considered an immoral act um and he basically says um i don't remember what the scenario is if it's a concentration camp or a, a slave plantation or whatever but let's say as a slave you get to vote on who your slave master is going to be and one of them will beat you 10 times a week and the other one will beat you eight times a week that you voting you know for the one that's going to be the eight times a week doesn't make you evil or perpetuating the system because no matter what you're going to be a slave right so in that very unique circumstance like there, there there's some truth to that you know but ultimately the point even that scenario illustrates is no matter what you're still a slave no matter what the only people you get to vote for are the the few options that are presented to you so it's not even like you really get much of a say because you're not getting to pick who you get to vote for which is the same way it works you know in our current political system you know they're presenting you with a couple options and of course you're not picking a representative for you you're picking a representative for the state you know don't don't get it twisted like say you're picking somebody to represent you no no no, no. that's not the case um but that's kind of you know, the two sides of it. Um, we will link to this in the uh, show notes, but there is a really good article. It's somebody responding to Wendy McElroy uh, saying that, you know, voting is evil. Responding, saying why he disagrees and he's a libertarian or whatever, you know, and then it has Konkin responding to his response. So it's really great. We'll link to that in the article or in the um, show notes. I really recommend you guys read that. And then also the article that spurn this was a talk that wendy gave uh, about you know why she wouldn't vote against hitler but she would put a bullet in a skull which i just fucking love <laughs> but um but it right. really goes over to the two different sides to that uh the you know the two different um ideas as to whether or not voting is immoral or, or what have you so i definitely recommend you guys read that you got anything on that brandon yeah uh so it's um it's for me, it's like, okay, if there was, this is a question that I like to ask people. If there were only five people voting in the whole entire United States, 
would you think that that election was legitimate? You know, um, would those results represent you at all? <laughs> right. Yeah. I think most people would be like, I think most sane people would, would say, you know, absolutely not. You know, and the thing too is, is you voting not only legitimizes the system, but really your vote actually doesn't matter because in the end, the electoral uh, college, um, you know, picks the, the, the presidency. So, um, so the, the presidential election actually doesn't matter at all. Um, because again, the electoral college could be like, well, this is the, the one that we're going with and, and that's final. So, but then you've got like, people say, you know, voting is violence and, and I, I can see it. Like if you've got, you know, you're basically forcing your will onto, onto others. Um, when you right, vote, there's an innocent certain... third party. Now, now again, I don't consider it violence if you're voting like no, no taxes, no, you know, anything that would violate the non-aggression principle. You're saying no to all that stuff. You're basically, you know, like anti, you're voting, but you're, you're going against pretty much every government option possible. Um, I could see that as not being violent, which is extremely, but I, I even think that, that that would be extremely rare because when you go into the ballot box and you see how they phrase these questions, you could easy, you, I'm like, oh, wow. I almost, you know, you know, uh, they write them to be tricky. They write yeah. them to be deceiving. Absolutely. You know? It's like and a it's, lawyer writes It's the them. lobbyists that write them. Yeah. Yeah. They're just, just like so many laws that are written by the companies they're supposed to regulate. And these are they're written by the, you know, the special interests who are getting these on the ballot. I noticed that too, man. It's crazy. Like you really got to like read them like four times. Yeah. I, and watch I, your double negatives and stuff. Right. Yeah. W when I voted, uh, I had to read the same thing four or five times. And sometimes I was still confused. I'm like, okay, it's just, you know, they, they probably shouldn't have worded it like that for sure. And so I think that even if you're trying to nonviolently vote or um, vote the way of the, the non-aggression principle, I still think that, that you, you, you're, you might accidentally vote, accidentally vote for, for violence on, on one of them because, because of how they phrased the question, you know? Oh yeah, or if you just don't realize that whenever you're voting for something to be illegal or regulated, you know, you're you're voting for violence. You know, even when it seems like it's something that might be good, you know, you're actually you're you're actually voting for violence in there. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't want I don't really want anyone to to use like heroin. You know, I think it's horrible. But I'm not gonna tell you you can and cannot put that inside of your own body because I I, I do not have ownership over you. Um well, you can tell somebody whether or not they should, but you can't, you know, bring violence to them, you know, in order to stop them, you know, um, uh, are there, so there's, there's different types of voting too. Like what we're talking about, you know, typically here, of course, is like, you know, politically, but, you know, let's say just voting itself, you know, isn't necessarily, um, immoral in certain circumstances. So like, let's say you're part of a group or a club and that's how they decide things you know if you're voluntarily involved in it you know i mean that's you know then that's okay right or like um like uh, a lot of crypto coins uh they're the way they do their governance is you know with voting by people who hold the coin you know that's that's not necessarily immoral either you know um but you're voluntarily you know going for it what do you think about like let's say like really like local, like let's say you live in a small town of like a thousand people and let's say they hold elections for things, um, you know, different stuff. Do you think that that's maybe more acceptable? I guess if it's something that affects less people and maybe more directly affects you, because I mean, let's face it, voting in the federal election means basically nothing to your life. You're voting for four people, you know, at the most who don't do anything unelected bureaucrats you know the the stuff you don't get to vote on is all the shit that affects you right but let's say it's something really local at your level um what uh what do you feel about it then i guess it might depend on what the vote is too you know i just wouldn't want to 
participate. I'm putting y'all on the hot spot there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to do that. <laughs> no, you're you're fine. I mean, I just wouldn't want to participate politically in any way, shape, or form. I mean, yeah, you guys can write on a piece of paper, you know, the you know that you voted for, and that I have to do what that piece of paper says. But um, but in reality, you know, do I really? And okay, it would well, be wrong one. Let me to. Give you a... Yeah, go ahead. Let me give you a relatively, relatively specific. And and I'm not saying like I know the answer to this either. This is something that I personally like struggle with. So, okay. So um, near me, there's a lot of uh, really big phosphate mines. Um, they're big. They're ugly. I don't think they should be illegal, you know, necessarily because, I mean, people need fertilizer and all the other stuff that phosphate does, you know. Um, but like they're big, they're ugly. There's a lot of chance for environmental catastrophe. We actually deal with a lot of that, you know here but let's say they wanted to put um you know they wanted to add one of these mines right here in this small town you know and maybe the people who live here think it might you know have negative effects on them do you think that maybe the the people of this you know again we're talking about somewhere small you know let's say a few thousand people um maybe if they wanted to get together and say like oh no we don't want to allow this but then i guess then but then violence comes in when you're gonna come in and stop the property owner from selling the property to that mine you know yeah. and that's that's not necessarily okay you know i mean i guess you could take a and then you know you maybe you could vote and say look the people here don't want you here maybe you should rethink this and it might be good advice you know or, or something but yeah i got but but yeah it always comes back to you using violence against nonviolent people you know yeah absolutely and i think that's just kind of like a a, a property rights issue like if if somebody wants to sell pro- their property to right. the mine owner and the mine owner builds a mine, you know, there's and property rights that's are consensual. actually upheld. Yeah. That, then that, I have, I have um, what you call recourse if they end up polluting my groundwater, you yeah. know, if property rights are actually upheld, you know, yep. and unfortunately in political system, that's not the way it works, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Well, the, but, the, uh, but the, yeah, if the EPA actually, um, destroyed property rights in the u.s completely i mean you mm-hmm. can't even have yeah. an environmental lawsuit without going to the epa first and and they'll always side with the big businesses because um yeah that's who we're, pays them. we're getting so, my wheelhouse here <laughs> but, uh, uh, but 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 you're right because it, it used to be um yeah environmental stuff oh i had that's that was one of the things that held me back from being an anarchist was i'm, I'm a big environmentalist but yeah once you learn things like you know like what you were just saying exactly like before the epa if somebody polluted your land or whatever you could sue them you know and this goes back hundreds of years i mean you could sue them for that you know but now as long as they're not breaking any laws you can't sue them so they're legally polluting or they just pay the fines, you know, and, and of course the EPA, because they get a lot of money out of fines, like they don't want to make the fines too heavy. They want people to break those rules. They want those big corporations to break these rules and don't get it twisted. I mean, they're working out these rules and regulations with these big corporations, you know, with Tyson chicken or the big hog man, hog, you know, pork people who do a lot of polluting. Hey, look, we're going to pay you these fines every year and you let us do our thing. You know, I mean, it's basically just bribery, you know, and it's, it's legal and it's open. But then when little old me, you know, wants to open a small farm, they bring a lot of shit down on me and I have no recourse, you know, because I'm not a gazillionaire like these, like these big producers are. So yeah. So I go off about environmental stuff all day, but yeah, man, it's uh, the, the EPA does more harm than good for sure. They, they enable pollution. Uh, I'm sorry, real quick, great example with those mines I was talking about they dump wastewater into the peace river if it's a certain like person you know a certain ppm of pollutants they're not allowed to dump it so what they do is they dilute it with groundwater before they dump it and the the state environmental agency gives them the permit to pump like 60 million gallons of water a day out of the ground to mix with their pollution that they then dump into the river so the same exact amount of pollution is going into the river but they're also sucking 60 million gallons of groundwater out of the ground every day, you know, in order to do that. And that's, there's this thing, oh, it's illegal for us to do this. Well, don't worry. We'll let you do more terrible shit for the environment to, you know, to counteract that and make it yeah, legal. Like, the whole it. thing is just, is just ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely. And, <laughs> and the, uh, these governmental agencies, you know, let these companies get away, you know. But anyways, let's turn topic to i want to talk about venezuela's last election in 2017 uh 2017 now 
um, I couldn't find it, but I remember them that the first that the first time they voted that there actually wasn't enough votes for 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 the election to be considered legitimate. So they had to do another one, and the second one is what this article is talking about, I believe. And so Venezuela was like before they always had like a ninety percent turnout in terms of voting. This la- the last one only had about 12%. So it's funny. Even this liberal Washington Post article, uh, the article is titled, With Low Turnout, Venezuela's Election Will Create What Opponents Call Puppet Congress. Even this liberal Washington Post article says, Venezuela has screamed with its silence. Or actually, that's what Julio Borges, head of National Assembly, said. But um, but it's just beautiful. It just it just shows you that the first time they didn't even have enough votes to for for it to be even considered legitimate by their constitution, which, which is awesome. But the second time, I mean, everybody knows that that that, that election is a fraud because there was where does it say how many voters there was? I think there was like they're saying there's eight million voters or something when only seven million people voted, something like that. Um, so, yeah, there's um, yeah, supposedly 8.1 million people had voted. Or authority said what what I'm getting from these articles is that if the the government is saying that more people are voting than what seem to have actually been voting. You know, so they're trying to sort of perpetuate this uh, you know, perpetuate it that you, know, you need to vote to the point where it's i don't think it's mandatory to vote there but like you kind of have to so there's people there basically saying like if you don't like when you vote you get this card gets you your food your housing stuff like that so if you don't vote then there is actually people who live there who are saying that they're afraid that the government's going to come take their house they're not going to give them their food rations uh etc so even with it being that like mandatory apparently people aren't doing it which should say a lot about what kind of job people think you're doing as a, as a government. Right. Yeah. And I mean, back then there was like all kinds of like protests and of, of course, everybody knows of the, um, their hyperinflationary, uh, scenario, but to stay on topic, um, yeah, it's just, I just thought that this is always kind of stuck in my mind, especially when I think about voting, because, like you said, I mean, they were being ex- extorted to vote and they still weren't voting. And it was just so beautiful that um, it's so beautiful that the first time they're, you know, even with the government probably skewing the numbers, they still didn't have enough for uh, for the Constitution to deem it legitimate, which is um, super awesome. But yeah, I. I don't know if you've got anything else on that, but uh, on Venezuela uh, particular. Yeah. I, uh, one of the, just one of the things that I love about this whole scenario is, uh, and this, this came out in a couple of different ways, but, and forgive me guys. I'm not, when it comes to the names of the people and stuff, I'm not super familiar with all the, everything that was going on down there, but, uh, but basically, you know, the, for all this talk about how great democracy is, which spoiler alert is not, and you know how important democracy is. And of course, let's bear in mind what's gone on the last three years here in the U S with Russia gate and all that democracy, blah, blah, blah. Um, basically the, you know, the U S government doesn't see these, uh, these elections in Venezuela as legitimate. So they're like, we're just not going to recognize it. And so are other countries down there like Colombia and other people who kind of have to do what the U S says, uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there's, there's, there's several quotes, of oh shoot i had one right here but basically like u.s like uh department of state people and ambassadors and stuff saying like yeah we uh we're not going to we're not going to recognize this election because you know we don't want to have authoritarian government in there so you know it's whatever we 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 don't recognize it you know and they i think even talk about sending in at one point sending in troops to like make sure that it went the way that, you know, the U S government thought that it should. And just like, well, I mean, what happened to democracy? Like at that point, again, I'm not defending democracy. I think it's silly, you know, but for people who claim that, you know, it's a good thing to say things like that, it's just really ridiculous. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, 
on Twitter, Nikki Haley, the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, wrote, Maduro's sham election is another step towards dictatorship. We won't accept an illegal government. The Venezuelan people and democracy will prevail <laughs> because they didn't like the outcome of a democratic election. <laughs> and then you have Mexico, Panama, uh, Colombia, stuff like that. So uh, again, it's just, I mean, it just shows the ridiculousness of all, all this. I mean, uh, is hypocrisy the right word here? Uh, it's, Absolutely. It's I just mean, silly. I just, we're going to be dictators don't because people don't see it because we don't recognize this. Um, we're going to be dictators because yeah. they don't recognize oh, yeah, this that, dictatorship. That, that's what it was. We're, we're, yeah, we're like, we don't recognize this dictatorship, so we're going to impose sanctions on the people. It's like, oh, so you're going to dictate to people in the U.S. and Venezuela who are not allowed to trade with each other because you don't <laughs> want dictators? And, um, <laughs> and of course, you know, sanctions, of course, just hurt, you know, the people who live in, live in these places. You know, they hurt the poor people. Like, they don't hurt the government. You know, sanctions are just attacks on the people itself, and they like to act like it's not, but it really is. I mean, sanctions are really awful. Lots of people starve to death. Lots of people die because they can't get medicines and stuff like that that they need because of sanctions. They are not a humanitarian way to deal with geopolitical strife. Mm, yeah. Well, was there anything else you want to discuss on the topic? I mean... Not necessarily, man. Um, like, like you said, it's like we had we had to talk about voting. Um, I was thinking uh, like a month ago, I'm like, should we do a voting episode? I'm like, I don't know. And then you mentioned it to me and it's like, OK, I don't feel so bad about even thinking the thought because I did kind of feel kind of dirty even thinking the thought. But as you know, that's part <laughs> of our ideology is not voting. So it's worth a discussion. You know, um, one thing that I do uh, want to um, want to throw out there, we were talking about the Rothbard Konkin uh, divide. There's a uh, definitely few sources, but because I'm sure all of our listeners own a copy of the new libertarian manifesto, um, the copy that I have is a 24th anniversary, 25th anniversary edition, and it actually has um, critiques in it. So it has critiques of a few people of the new libertarian manifesto, one of which is Rothbard. So he actually has, there's a couple pages in here that Rothbard wrote critiquing it. And then a few pages that Konkin wrote back um, about, uh, you know, about um, Rothbard's thoughts. And then, I mean, I think they both, they both make really good points. Of course, I'm going to ultimately side with Konkin. Um, but if you, but that is a really good place to, uh, to sort of get into a little bit of that as well. I personally love reading a little bit of a debate because it really helps me work ideas out in my head better, you know, because they'll be like, well, what about this? They'll be like, yeah, what about that? You know, and it just sort of helps round out ideas a little bit better. So that is another great place to go if anybody wants uh, more info on that, because if you're anything like me, I am a huge Rothbard fan and a huge Conker fan. So, um, you know, it's a, it, it can be kind of hard when there's somebody, you know, like Rothbard, who I was an anarcho-capitalist before, of course, you know, I was like, oh man, he's just a man, you know, not like I had a, you know, painting of him on a wall or anything weird like that. But um, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that. <laughs> Even your heroes can be wrong, I guess. Um, but uh, but no, man, that's a uh, that, that, that's pretty much it. I've uh, I've been trying to review my notes from the the debate. I'm still not sure who I'm going to vote for yet. But you know, we'll see. It's a it's a hard decision. You really got to take it seriously. This is the most important election of our lifetime, guys. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, that's satirical. <laughs> but uh it's the but most no, important uh, election uh, i think that's all i got man yeah, yeah. <laughs> every time it's funny how that fucking happens you know yeah funny how this is always the most important one uh um, there, also, there, guys, there, see, there have been times on any voting stuff yeah he kills it um <laughs> sorry but, go ahead uh, there have been times where there was like one libertarian candidate another one and i was like well i'd probably prefer for that libertarian candidate for reason xyz but again when i say that i'm saying that i'd rather be shot instead of burned alive you know so right right yeah, <laughs> yeah you know uh you know i prefer this candidate like you know being shot in the head to where you know that candidate is like being burned alive you know so um but um, I, I prefer the, the libertarian candidate that would just completely dissolve the government. But if enough people voted for them, we wouldn't need to vote for it. People would just stop. And that's what gets me with like democracy, like all over is it's like if a vast majority of the people enough to make democracy matter, if a vast majority of the people 
already believe something, why do we need government to enforce it? Wouldn't that just be the way people are? You know, if, you know, especially things like voting for higher taxes to pay for something. It's like, if enough people think that it's important enough that we need to pay more taxes to do that, then wouldn't people just do that? Wouldn't people just donate to that or contribute or make that happen? So I don't know. Whole thing's just stupid. Right. Stupid yeah. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's all, it's all a big circus that wastes lots of resources. And it's like, why do you even want to waste your time? Um, waste time out yeah. of your day going down there to to participate somehow in this in this in the circus. What e- even if even if you're trying to maintain as many rights as possible, it's just like you know, as an agorist, it's like actually I want I want the public to vote to make everything illegal so that way the government gets you know, less resources from, you know, everything, you know, or everything that has, it it gives me more opportunity to make a lot of money off of legal shit too. So, you know, (laughs) right. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So, Oh shit. Well, uh, we'll just remember guys. You can uh, always vote by mail. If you want Ruth Bader Ginsburg will be voting by mail this year. And so my grandparents. (laughs) Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah. (laughs) I thought they were going to keep her up there on the Supreme Court even after, uh, even after death. So, but just, um, just like just like that Pope peers back. Oh, sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> but um, on that note, I think I think that's going to be a wrap for the um, for the episode. Appreciate all your co-hosting, Dag, for sure. So anytime, man, anytime. I'll leave it with a quote here: Voting is not an act of political freedom; it is an act of political conformity. Those who refuse, refuse to vote are not expressing silence. They are screaming in the politician's ear. You do not represent me. This is not a process in which my voice matters. I do not. Wendy Macaro. Of course, next is out. Poetry. Peace. <laughs>